Hello and happy new moon. My name is Allison and I am here to encourage you to get in touch with the moon cycle and your own personal cycle to create the wonderland of your uh, own imagination. Uh, today we are here with a pick a card reading for the new moon in Aries for April of 2022. We have three piles here. They all have, so because of this Aries and all of this fire energy that we've got going on, all of the piles, as you can see, have red candles. And um, I would also like you to know that the I'm having a Aries fire new moon candle sale. Um, so find the link in the description below uh, to take you to the shop where you can purchase your candles. They come in all sorts of colors, but I chose specifically all red for today. So you get a red candle, you get a red candle, and you get a red candle. All of the piles get a red candle uh, to help ignite the spark within, uh, to help you set your intentions for the new moon and the next moon cycle. So pile number one, we have... Um, we have uh, Satchiel. This is uh, an archangel um, message here. Uh, she also comes with this Enough Bebop and a Geomati shell uh, in the center. Here we have Catriel, another guardian angel message. And he goes along with this courage bebop, <laughs> bebop, and a tumbled tiger's eye stone. And last but not least, we have pile number three with a Metatron Archangel card, a Lepidolite cube, a tumbled cube, and an Integration Bebop. So lots of things to choose from today. Luckily you don't have to choose which candle color jumps out at you, um, but it could be the angel jumps out at you, the stone jumps out at you, or the word message here on the bebops jumps out at you. Um, so take your time, take a deep breath. You may wish to pause the video to help you get a uh, better, take more time and see which one jumps out at you. Uh, once you decide one, two, or three, you will find the corresponding timestamp in the description box below, and that will take you directly to your reading and you will notice that there is also a fourth timestamp that is there for a closing statement to kind of wrap up all of the uh, messages and also a little more information about the Aries new moon, um, what you should be um, setting your tensions around. I also have an announcement uh, regarding a giveaway, so I'll be talking about that at the end. Um, so after you watch your reading, please click on that fourth timestamp also. And uh, for those, that information and those messages, um, as well as please like and subscribe. Uh, also check me out on Twitch where I do free tarot readings, uh, live streaming. Uh, I also offer personal readings, which I don't think <laughs> that's something that I talk about a lot, but you can purchase uh, one time tarot readings in my shop, or you can subscribe to my monthly memberships on coffee, which gets you um, a, a, a monthly rather large uh, uh, reading um, once a month. Um, like I said, that's a membership. There's a couple different variations. There's one that just gets you um, a good general reading for the month, and there is also a, for a higher tier and an, an additional fee. There is a live one-on-one -on -one readings where you can interact and uh, get more messages that way. Um, so thank you so much for your support. I will see you hopefully at the closing statement. If not, I will see you next time. Thank you so much.
Hi group one, if you chose um, <laughs> the Fred candle uh, with the Enough Bebop and the Giamatti shell stone. Oh, the camera doesn't really do this justice. Um, then, and this beautiful Satchiel Angel Oracle card. Then this uh, reading is for you for the, the new moon in Aries for April 2021. Um, so I'm going to light your candle for you to help celebrate this fire new moon. <clears throat> And um, I think we'll get to the angel in a moment. I'd like to start with the tarot cards to just kind of get like a uh, baseline for like what, uh, what kind of energy we're working with right now. So let's see, can I move this over here? Sorry, group one, you're always the one that I'm like figuring out where I can, where I can place things without <laughs> melting my camera and all of that good stuff. So the first card that we have for you, group one, is the Three of Pentacles. And we also have the Six of Pentacles. I do want to move this here. <laughs> Sorry, you're always the guinea pig. Uh, in the center, we have the high priestess. And the tower. Of it and the ace of pentacles. I was trying to make everything look pretty and decorative, but uh, we, we really just need need room for the cards here. Okay, so a lot going on for you this next moon moon cycle. If it has not already uh, kicked you in the butt yet, <laughs> um, but also a lot of good things going on for you. And I feel like I need to remind you that I think that you are the high priestess. Uh, you are very intuitive. You're capable of balancing the light and the dark. And you can sit in discernment and to kind of just uh, let things just kind of like wash over you without, without reacting to them. Um, I also think that you understand that um, despite everything that's going on in your life right now, that like there is like a bigger purpose to it. Um, so you're kind of, I think, of course, you're going to have your times where you're like stressed out and anxious. Um, but I think you're, you are a person like the high priestess who is able to bring it back to center and um, remember that things happen for a reason, things crumble, uh, sometimes things need to crumble in order to build from the ground up. Um, I think you're kind of aware that there is something better um, at the end of uh, whatever it is that you're going through. Um, but let's start at the beginning, because um, this, this is also a good thing to remember. Um, the Three of Pentacles is a card of collaboration, as you can see in the images here. Um, this is uh, specifically like a, an art project uh, where uh, these three people in the image are working together. Um, I think this card is here to remind you uh, of your friends and your family, uh, your co-workers, um, the people in your life that are uh, surrounding you um, and are there for support and um Possibly collaboration too, like working on something together. Um, <clears throat> we also have the Six of Pentacles here, and the Six of Pentacles is a 
card that teaches us to be open to receiving help when we need it. Uh, it also is a card that teaches us to offer help when we have abundance and excess and we are able to give to people who are less fortunate than us. Um, <clears throat> I'm kind of getting the sense that you are the one that is on the receiving end of, <clears throat> of the Six of Pentacles energy. Um, so it's really important to remember to be open to receiving. Uh, we get stuck in this uh, poverty mindset where we're like, oh, I don't, I don't have enough. And, and we just keep repeating that over and over again. Like, I don't have enough. How am I going to make it? What am I going to do? Um, okay, we're back with a cough drop. <laughs> Um, so the point that I was trying to make with the Six of Pentacles is that all energy, and especially for those of us that, sorry, let me, let me get to one point. All energy is a give and take situation. It's a two way street. What the energy that you put out there is what's going to come back to you. The the law of attraction, like like attracts like, um, negative attracts negative. Um, but if we put up these walls, especially when if we're going through a difficult time, and we don't want anybody to know about it, we try to put on a happy face. Um, th this is blocking you from receiving so by putting out into the universe or discussing with a friend uh hey i'm going through a rough time right now i really need help it comes back to you <laughs> by keeping it all in and putting that wall there and not letting anybody know about it you're not allowing you're not allowing help to come in so you're really being asked to Stand, stand in your power. It, uh, it, it doesn't mean that you're any less than um, the powerful, wonderful person that you are. It doesn't mean that you're any less than anything when you for asking for help. Um, you, I feel like you have really great people in your life that are, are willing to reach out and help. And it might even be like a, a work collaboration kind of thing or like, hey, I really need this help, um, uh, but I'm willing to like do some yard work for you or babysit your kids or um, uh, I'll make you, I'll paint you a painting, I'll make you some candles, I'll uh, give you a massage, <laughs> I'll like it, having it be this equal exchange of energy so it's not just like making you feel like you're just taking charity or a donation or something like that, like having it, um, sometimes too, I feel like the six of pentacles is about, fe uh, seeing your, the value in the work that you do in the world and the work that you put out in the world. Um, especially with this, this three of pentacles, like you might be always like doing offering free services. I mean, small business owners, we feel like we have to just offer things for free just to get people in the door or to look at your content or to or see your the work that you've created. But I think this next moon cycle is going to be about real recognizing your worth that it's okay to ask for help if you need it. I think there's there's like a couple different energies. Like this is a collective reading here. I think um, in, in some way, this is somebody that is really needing um, financial help. But at the same time, I think there's um, other people that selected this pile that are um, needing to recognize that their, their worth, the work that they do in the world is worth uh, financial return you everybody on this planet is um worthy of having all of their needs met and to not be struggling and to have prosperity and to have abundance um this i think so that that i feel like a lot of different people chose this pile so that i'm getting like a bunch of different messages and i think that's what is tripping me up a little bit 
um, when we have the tower, like it's it's a scary moment in our lives. It, it's something that sometimes comes out of nowhere where you're just like, maybe you are like living paycheck to paycheck and you're getting by and you're okay and all your needs are met, but maybe like something big happens, like all of a sudden, like uh, your car needs to get fixed or uh, just an unexpected bill comes up or something like that. And you're just like, well, sh we were getting by, but like now what do we do? Um, the tower card doesn't have to be complete devastation, but remember you're the high priestess. Remember to trust that these things are crumbling and falling. Uh, your skin is shedding because you need to create something new. And at the end of all of this, something new and prosperous is coming your way. Something new is being offered to you, but it's going to take saying goodbye to something, letting something crumble, walking away from something uh, in order for this good thing to come in. Um, I couldn't believe when this angel came up for this pile. Um, so it's kind of interesting that this uh, the angel is portrayed here as a fortune teller, kind of gypsy, <laughs> gypsy kind of energy. And we also got the high priestess here. So I was like, whoa, th this is blowing me away. Um, and there were some things that jumped out at me in the book. Um, her message is true wealth lies within. It is time to place more value in yourself so you can be generous without feeling drained. And uh, uh, there were a couple, I, I like mark some pages in here. Um, there are a couple things that jumped out at me. Um, when you switch your mindset from one of scarcity, greed, or purely personal gain, Thoughts of gratitude, sharing, and generosity. Wait, I think I blocked out part of it. Yeah. <laughs> when you switch your mindset from one of scarcity, greed, or purely personal gain to thoughts of gratitude, sharing, and generosity, you open to the flow of infinite abundance. Look at this. Like she's giving, but she's also receiving. She's giving and she's receiving. You align yourself with Archangel Satchiel's generous love when you understand that by holding a, lovey, a loving intention whereby you recognize your true worth and value as the infinite bounty of your divinity. You can then begin to see that same worth reflected in others. Ensure you are open to receive all you desire and all that you deserve. Then it is easier to share of your abundant time, energy, resources, and wealth selflessly through open-hearted goodwill and in alignment to the divine flow. Um, so Satchiel is the angel of wealth and charity. Just so the six of pentacles is the charity card. It's so <laughs> amazing that this, this card popped up. Um, uh, Satchiel is one of the guardians of the fourth heaven or the heart chakra. As Lady Luck, she is often linked to Jupiter, the planet of luck and good fortune. Uh, her colors are violet or blue. And whenever you invoke Satchiel, she reminds you that you have access to the law of attraction. She shows you that abundance is always within your grasp when you acknowledge your divine limit, limitlessness. Okay, so we've got a lot going on for you uh, this month, group one. Uh, we've got some everyday witch cards. The first one is give love. Um, so this again is talking about being open to giving and receiving. We also have inspiration and courage. And this was like the big one that jumped out to me, um, so we'll be reading from the book for this one also. <clears throat> and we also have Change and Progress, which is um, the Tower card is a Change and Progress card. So you are going through a big transformation, 
Uh, I feel like it's it's surrounding your relationship with money, your uh, relationship with uh, your own self worth, and so the inspiration and courage card has some messages for you. Life is full of challenges. Some of them we take on willingly. Some of them come out of nowhere, which is tower, tower card stuff comes out of nowhere. Uh, some of them come out of nowhere when you least expect them. Good or bad, happy or sad, all those things that challenge us also give us opportunity to grow stronger, to push our boundaries and to move out of our comfort zones, to reach deep inside or reach out towards others. Whether you are seeking inspiration for work or play or dealing with illness or grief, don't underestimate the power of your own thoughts. Don't underestimate your own power as the high priestess here. Um, the action here is we all have pa patterns of thinking that are a part of who we are as human beings. Some of them work for us. Some of them don't. During a challenging time or when you are seeking to push yourself to be more creative or make big changes, it is easy for those old patterns of thought to get in the way and get in the way of for forward movement. Take a few minutes to consider your own patterns. Do you default the positive or the negative? Is your glass half empty or is your glass half full? Um, do you automatically think I can do it or I'll never succeed? Are you willing to try new things or do you cling to the old even when you know it isn't working? Uh, you are really getting a big message that something is going to have to go in order for you to have this big, new, wonderful, prosperous thing coming into your life. If you, if you get this card, you are probably in need of inspiration or courage, or possibly both. That's okay, because this card is telling you that it is out there, or maybe waiting right inside of you. If it is inspiration you need, look to the natural world that surrounds you. It is full of wonders, but don't forget to look inside, too. The human mind is an amazing place filled with ideas, possibilities, and few of us explore it fully. If courage is what you seek, you may discover that you have a core of inner strength you never knew existed. But don't forget to allow others to encourage you and to reach out to the God and Goddess and the eternal forces of the universe. Spiritual beliefs, no matter what they are, can be a great source of both inspiration and courage if you remember to call on them when you need them. Call on your friends. Call on these people that are your, your OG ride or die um, and ask for help if you need it. But you can also count on your spirit guides. If you don't have humans uh, on this earth that you feel comfortable or uh, talking about difficult things that you're going through in your life, you always have your spirit guides. Nobody is ever alone. I have to tell myself this all the time. I'm never alone. Um, we also got some earth messages for you. Uh, dragonfly emergence and rainbow blessings. Uh, I really like to read about the dragonfly one because I had never, uh, haven't gotten this card before from this deck, which is crazy because it's one of my oldest decks. Um, you are in an intense process of emergence into the next cycle of your life. Unlike more gradual shifts in awareness, you have experienced this one is happening quite rapidly and came on somewhat unexpectedly. This is another tower indication here. Without any pauses or contemplation or indecision, you may even think, that you are unprepared for such dramatic changes in your life. Yet you are prepared and can put to use the experiences and wisdom you have accumulated up until now. 
Life is demanding that you move into the next stage of maturity. This requires you to adjust your thinking about yourself, others, and your community. It calls for you to shed yet another layer of your ego-filled defenses and let go of any illusions of being, of being less than who you are. I'm going to read that sentence again. Pay attention. <laughs> Life is demanding that you move into the next stage of maturity. This requires you to adjust your thinking about yourself, others, and your community. It calls for you to shed yet another layer of your ego-filled defenses and let go of any illusions of being less than who you are. This period of emergence is one of broadened consciousness and heightened perceptual capacities, and since it is an inevitable, it is best to surrender to the flow and allow yourself to gracefully move into the next cycle of your life. And the next cycle of your life has rainbow bl blessings. This is all coming into the Ace of Pentacles, but we have to go through the tower to get to these blessings. Okay, one last card, and then we have some um, mini cards here too. We have the season, whoops, <laughs> the season of spice and hearth. Now this is a um, sacred hag message, and the uh, keyword for this is um, death. So death and the tower kind of go along with each other. The tower is something that's like something that's more sudden that happens in your life. Um, but the death card is more of like a transition, a transformation, or like letting go, saying goodbye. <clears throat> so death is never the end, of course. But even so, no one has ever escaped the reaper's gaze. Why fear then? Why the refusal to know what awaits us all? Think of all the small deaths you have experienced in your life. Our relationships die. Our masks fall from our faces. Beloved creatures go into the ground. This is the way of it, and befriending the word death is an immense source of power. To walk with death is radical, a chin raised to those who would have us terrified and malleable. If you hold hands with both the feeling flesh and the promise of this body's demise, you are surely living your best life. We are creatures of immensely capable of seeing beauty, feeling love, all while understanding that someday we shall find ourselves at the door of death. Just as the babe finds itself inevitably pushed from the warm wound, death and birth are the same thing. Um, I chose uh, to use this deck because um, I love that it has morning rituals and moonlight rituals, which is really nice to start on a new moon. Uh, so the morning ritual is a thankful eulogy. We live better when we find a kinship with death. As this day dawns, think of a role you used to play long ago that is yours no longer. Consider a name you have used to have that no longer fits or a label that lost adhesion and fell from your skin. Write a eulogy now for this aching one you once were. You may use the prompts I offer here or write your own. And she has a couple of prompts that say like, here lies, dot, 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 lived well, I think at least when, dot, dot, dot. The story I think they, he, she, <laughs> they, he, she would want to tell me is this. So just basically writing a eulogy for the person that you no longer are. Whoever whatever part of your life that you're saying goodbye to. That's a, that's a really, it's a really cool practice to try um, every morning so that you are, the more that, the reason we say affirmations, and I think the reason that people don't uh, use affirmations as much as like we should because they work, um, is because you don't believe them yet. It's, they're so positive and there's something that 
you're not yet. So I think people find it difficult to be saying these words that they don't really feel true, are true to them. Um, but that's the whole point. The whole point is that I want to have this. I want to embody this. I want this. I have this. So by affirming it over and over and over again, eventually you believe it. So by affirming, I'm letting go of this old self, you're making room and you're physically shedding that part of you, but you're making room for this new blessing to come into your life. And the, so the last little messages that we have for you, group one, are music. There is a melody to be heard in the deepest parts of the woods, if only we listen. Um, I kind of feel like this ties back to what I was saying about the high priestess here at the beginning, is that I kind of feel like you have been able to feel and sense that things are shifting and changing, and that even though it's difficult, that you know that something better is around the corner. Um, so I think that just like getting into the flow, getting on into your own rhythm, finding your beat, finding your the walking to the the tune of your own theme song is going to help you to like continue to move forward and not get stuck in a oh gosh all these things are happening to me um what do i do oh no because that's when like we just spiral into this like negative negative cycle of just expecting bad things to happen to us all the time um so the other word i love this for a new moon is wish make a wish with a dandelion in the wind um, set your intentions of really maybe doing this uh morning ritual saying an affirmation every morning doing something that's really going to uh, help you embody this new person that you are trying to become the the a fire moon gives us the opportunity to burn away everything that doesn't serve us. I feel like um, a fire moon is the best for transformation because it's, I mean, fire will burn it all away and there's no trace of it. Um, when we try to um, use air, it's like it can still cling to us. It can blow away, it can blow away back here, but it's still like following us if there's like one little attachment that's still there. And same thing with water. But with fire, it's completely burning it all away. So there's no trace of it. There's no way for it to like sprout up through the cracks in the sidewalk. Uh, it's just, it's just going to be gone. And the last one you have is change. Falling leaves do not signify the end, but the beginning of a fruitful season. So the things that you're shedding, the things that you're letting go of with this tower, are just go they're going to grow something new and they're going to change and transform just like the fall leaves fall off of the tree in the fall uh, they sprout new life in spring and here we are in spring so what were the things that you shed in the fall and uh, what how are they nourishing your new seeds that are planted this spring um, I hope you have a happy you mean, oh, remember that you are enough, that you are powerful, and uh, maybe making some, using this new moon to make some sort of prosperity talisman, because you've got a lot of, of pinnacle prosperity, financial uh, things going on for you. So working with a stone like the Gomadi uh, shell uh, can help bring, see how it, um, spins infinitely such is the cycle of life and such is the cycle of can be the cycle of prosperity it's always constantly flowing to you if you constantly allow it to flow to you Alrighty, friends um stay tuned to the end to learn more about this aries full moon connecting with fire energy and we'll see how all of the readings collectively tie together. Um, that's on the fourth timestamp in the description below. Thank you so much. Oh, there's a candle sale, crazy candle fire sale. 
for this new moon. Um, I'm also giving away a copy of the Sacred Hags Oracle. Um, so look for the details in the description below about how you can win uh, an Oracle deck. Hello, beautiful group two. Um, if you chose this uh, Courage Bebop and a Tiger's Eye Stone, then this reading is for you for the new moon in Aries from April 2022. I think I said 2021 earlier <laughs> in group one. Um, but anyways, I'm going to light your red candle for this fiery Aries moon. And we'll jump into your reading. Uh, so we will get into this beautiful Acatriel angel in a moment. So I'll just set that over to the side. Uh, and I'd like to start with our tarot cards here. Lots of, <laughs> lots of cards here. Um, Alrighty, so first one we have is the Page of Cups. And then we have the Star. And the Seven of Swords. We're going to have to move. And strength and the higher fan. Now, how did these fit in the last video? <laughs> All five of them fit across, but now they're not. I don't understand. Shoot. That's weird. They fit like totally fine in the last video. Okay. <laughs> so, um, a lot has been going on for, well, for group one too, but also for group two. Um, the overall sense that I get from just the tarot cards here is that you're not giving yourself credit for the spiritual work that you've done for the optical obstacles that you've overcome. And you're not you're not just you're just not giving yourself credit um in the center of this we have the seven of swords which is a card of deceit and i mean this could be i mean this is a collective reading so um this could mean that somebody in your life is being deceitful but the message that i was getting when i first pulled the cards is that you are deceiving yourself uh, you're deceiving yourself of how far you've come, and you're also deceiving yourself how strong and powerful that you are. Um, it's it's interesting that this this particular reading kind of gave me the sense of the journey that you've been on, and I kind of feel like right now this is where you're at. You're not acknowledging that. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. So the Page of Cups is a card of... Um, watery emotional uh learning learning your spirituality learning something emotional learn all of the pages are kind of like students and they are learning how to uh embrace embrace their emotions embrace their spirituality and it's it's almost kind of like surprising it has this like really light-hearted like whoa there's a fish in a cup who knew whoa that's so cool <laughs> it's like um it's got this very like dreamy aspect of it too and i feel like you have been on this spiritual journey and you've come a really long way um the other message that i was getting or, or maybe of like how the people who chose this pile might be feeling at this time is maybe kind of like a plateau you're like i've done all this work i've made this transformation i feel new but it's just kind of like stopped like okay well what like what's going on now what's next what's happening um but the the star card is, is a is kind of like a little bit of a pause it's like uh 
You've got one foot in the subconscious. You've got one foot on dry land. You're able to nourish and water both of those aspects of yourself. This is a card of tranquility and peace. And because you have discovered these new uh, emotions or new, new, this new spirituality side to yourself. Um, and I'm not, I'm not really feeling like you're actually allowing yourself that peace and that like, like flow. Um, because we have this seven of swords here, that's a card of deceit. And it's like, it's, it's a card of like feeling like you've gotten away with something like you've, you've achieved and you've accomplished, but like, you don't really feel like it's yours or that you deserve it or that you're worthy of it. Um, Again, this can mean that something in your life is a little bit deceitful or, but I really kind of feel like this is more about you deceiving yourself and not recognizing how powerful and strong you are because we have the, the strength card here and look, it's even, she's even looking back at her. Like, she's like, is that me? Is that me? I don't even feel like that's me, but like, this is like, <laughs> this is like your inner your inner goddess or your inner warrior or your inner wise man and you're kind of like I don't I don't feel that strong and I don't feel that power I don't think that but like the truth is that it, it is you uh, and you have that power so I think I think that what is next for you is to create some sort of discipline ritual routine around the this new spiritual aspect of yourself um we we have a lot of power in this reading and this archangel in particular i'd like to read more about him um his message is do not compare yourself to others nor listen to criticism or judgment from those who choose to remain closed to their own hearts. Likewise, do not judge another. Listen to the voice of God with, within to know the right course of action to take. Um, so maybe you're like, well, I thought spirituality was going to look like this beautiful star card, and it doesn't. It looks more like this, like like uh, lifting and heavy and unsure. Uns uh, insecurity and unsureness like uh, it is a journey and it's not all going to look like this peace and balance but because those those tranquil moments are are few and far between and that's the lesson is that like when they happen we have to truly be in that moment and appreciate it for what it is and have gratitude for it um so i don't know if i'm pronouncing this correctly but i Akatriel, I, I, I googled the pronunciation, but the pronunciation itself got one star review, so I don't know if it was actually <laughs> accurate or not. I'm like, who reviews pronunciations? But anyways, Akatriel uh, comes call. wait, um, well, uh, he is a type of super angel who is one of the angels of presence. Oh, and his keyword is glory. Um, he is the angel of presence or the angel of faith. Face, uh, which is a group of ultra important angels who work very closely with God or creator. Akatriel is particularly vital as he is known as the voice of God or the presence of God and sits on the throne of glory. Um, so he's a very, very powerful angel. And... Um, Akatriel can help you see your own greatness. He can also bring you the gifts of self-sufficiency and capability to enable you to stand on your own two feet and trust your own judgment, especially in times of hardship or where your intuition may be challenged. He reminds us not to compare ourselves to the success of others but to look within the depths of our own soul in order to see our true magnificence and glory. With Akatriel's assistance, as you sit in silence and look within for the answers you seek, you will feel as though you are sitting upon your own throne of glory as the true master of your own destiny. 
Um, so very powerful messages for you to stand in your power. Um, get rid of this <laughs> Seven of Swords energy. You, you, you are powerful. You are a divine light being. Um, getting into that daily routine of recognizing that, whether that's like a meditation practice every morning, an exercise routine, uh, anything that is going to enrich and nourish your soul and your mind and your body. Um, where do we want to go next? We got um, some Everyday Witch Oracle cards for you here. Joy and delight. And I'm going to place this right on top of the star card because you are being asked to take this time of plateau and enjoy it and enjoy that peace and that star energy. Uh, we also have healing water. So you might want to take this new moon to do, I know this is a fire moon, but you might want to incorporate some cleansing to shed that past you so that you can stand up into your power here. Um, and you also have plant the seeds. So once we achieve our goals, which I feel like you have with this star card, you've achieved the spirituality that you were going for and it comes naturally. It's like part of your daily routine. It's part of your day to day. Now's the time to think about the new seeds that you want to be planting because that's the thing. Like we are forever on this journey. It's not like you get to this enlightenment period and it's like all clouds and sitting on a throne. It's you have to go to the next level. There's always a next level to be had. Um, and we also have green man and synergy for you. So I kind of am getting the message that gardening is going to be some, a really big part of, or working with plants. Um, that's going to be a really big part of this like daily, like maybe adding your spirituality into your cooking or your food or growing your own food, uh, that sort of thing. We also have the stone people in vigilance and lotus flower unfoldment. Um, so I wanted to read from the lotus flower because this is along this star joy delight uh, sort of energy that we have going on here. Uh, your spiritual unfoldment is occurring at all times, whether or not you are aware of it. It is inevitable as long as you put your trust in the hands of the creator, the one who holds the light. Like the lotus, your soul is always reaching for the light to, to fulfill its karmic destiny. That was just what I was saying. There's no end to it. But even in, in that process, there are periods of darkness and times to rest. It is a natural cycle, one that cannot truly be co coerced or halted. It is an intimate rhythm of its own, one that is unique to the being that is you. You do not need to strive or be driven by spiritual ambition. It does no good to try to force growth upon yourself or others for that matter. Allowing is the key here. Allow the place in, allow the place in you that naturally wants to follow the light to do so while recognizing that even when you have complete faith, you will face challenges and occasionally suffering. Your steady faith and love will guide you on your journey of returning to the light. So this journey is always going to have its ebbs and flows is basically what this is, is, is saying. Um, and to keep going, like just because you feel like you've had this plateau or this lull doesn't mean that you should stop or go backwards or regress. Um, because you're, you're asking to remain vigilant here. Remain vigilant at this time, but not out of fear. Vigilant simply means opening up your mind and senses to information as, as it is presented to you through the eyes, ears, and physical sensations and detachment thoughts. It is especially true in two main areas. First, Follow any gut feelings that tell you to be wary about something or something. Ooh, interesting because we, so this might be somebody who's trying to deceive you in your, in your life, um, or just be wary or mindful of that. Um, second, pay close attention to an important opportunity that presents itself. 
one that may enhance your life and the lives of others. So this might be some, um, the Hierophant can also represent like some sort of formal education. So maybe like a, a class comes up that just, you're just like, is really calling to you, maybe taking an online class. Um, maintain your vigilance of the clues around you and inside you. Assess what is emanating from your body and then sort out any conditioned responses from what is purely instinctual. Examine the situation with heart, intuition, and mind in harmony. For this is how vigilance serves you. Detach, take a breath, and stand tall in your stature. Whew. Excuse me. <laughs> Alrighty, we've got one more one more oracle card, and then we've got some mini cards to go through. Uh, you've got um, from this sacred hag deck, which I um, am giving away a free copy of this deck. Um, check out the description in in or the <laughs> check out the information in the description box below for information on how to win uh, yourself a copy and. Um, your card is the Hag of Storms. Oop, I turned right to it and then lost it. Um, so the key word for this card is chaos. Um, the world has yet to show you its true majesty. And there are many unseen and unnamed forces at work coming together to hold you so strongly then falling into the mist once again. Chaos exists, my love. There's no doubt about it. But even within such chaos, there is an order unknown to us. It must be so. We cannot know all, or our world would be starving for mystery and darkness. So, excuse me, I'm so sorry <laughs> for yawning. It's the middle of the afternoon. I don't know why I'm yawning. So I think the message of this card for you specifically is um, I'm thinking that part of this deceit that you're feeling or deception that you're feeling is that like maybe you are feeling this peace and balance and tranquility but you're kind of like telling yourself but the world is crazy and chaotic and these times are hard and difficult like why do I feel such at peace with everything and I think that is that is an attestment to the spiritual work that you have done. The things that used to give you anxiety or depression or um, cause you to burn out or freak out isn't bothering you anymore. So that you've reached this point where you you can stand your ground, you can be strong, you can be vigilant, you can you're you're like you're not you're practicing discernment and you're allowing these things to come at you but still um be hopeful and positive that things are going to shift and change and be better um without regressing going backwards getting overwhelmed getting anxious or depressed so this is i think a true attestment of you are weathering the storm and you're doing it with grace and, and, and you're harnessing your power. You're harnessing all of this energy that's flowing through you instead of, instead of holding on to it, you're like letting it flow. So <laughs> the last cards that we have for you are time, embrace in the dewdrops of life before they disappear with the morning sun and this this is a message that's such an testament of this lotus flower the joy and fulfillment and the star and the just like understanding okay i know this i know this good time isn't going to last forever and you're you're you want to enjoy it use this new new moon cycle to really enjoy the good times and in the same way, recognize that when bad things happen, they're not going to last forever either. So you take peace in that, knowing that this is going to shift and change, but so are the good times. So really like honor those good times. Um, you, we're getting another strength message here. So if, if you are not feeling very strong at this time, know that you are in spirit sees that you are 
when your roots are deep, you need not fear the storm and you're getting another storm message too. Maybe you're just surprised, surprising yourself with how calm you are with, um, with the storm that is passing through your life. And last but not least, path. Wander on the path less traveled. What you find might surprise you. And I think that this is just another attestment to you are on this journey. Continue to keep going. Um, even if you're having a lull, even if you're having a setback, it keeps going. It's a spiral. It continues and continues and continues. Um, so I chose, of course, the courage to go along with all of the strength messages that we've been receiving and Tiger's Eye um, for its solar plexus confidence energy uh, to tap into that star energy to remind yourself that you do have courage and strength um, to continue on your journey. And it's such a beautiful journey. Congratulate yourself with how far you have come. Um, if you would like to hear more information about this particular new moon and how all of the readings uh, collectively kind of related to each other with this energy, um, stick around for the, or check out the fourth timestamp in the description below and that will take you directly to the end and the closing statement. Um, I hope to see you there, but if not, I will see you next time. Thank you so much for your support. Hello, group three. If you, I'm going to light your red candle for you. If you chose gorgeous Metatron here, uh, along with this Lapidolite cube and the integration Bebop, then this reading is for you for the new moon in Aries. And man, was it a powerful one. We've got lots of cards to get through. Um, this, this pile had the most cards um, of, of all of the groups. So um, we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, we'll get to Metatron and the Oracle cards in a moment. We've got a lot of Oracle cards here. Um, uh, but let's jump into the tarot cards first. Uh, so, we have the Ace of Pentacles. The Ten of Swords. The Tower. The Four of Wands. and the king of wands so before you freak out because of the ten of <laughs> the ten of swords in the tower here in the center uh the big message i'm getting from this group is you wanted that tower to fall and you were ready for it you made it happen and you were like burn that bridge burn that shit down i'm done i'm done There has been a spark inside of you. Um, maybe you've saved up a little bit of money. Maybe uh, you, and I don't know, got a raise. Um, something, something physical and tangible has come into your life and it's given you that like push that you needed to get the fuck out of whatever situation you were in before. Um, because you're done. Like you, you couldn't take these swords stabbing in your back anymore and you were just fucking done. Um, this feels like a really big transformation for you because of the Ten of Swords in the tower, but it just feels like, I, I feel like you are burning these bridges. Like you are not going back. You're not talking to these people anymore. You're not going to associate them with them anymore. You're, you're, or this situation, this place, whatever it is, like you're just done 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 um and i feel like this is what you wanted this is bringing you the stability and the foundation and the happiness and the cause for celebration that you have been looking for and that you've been wanting for i'm also kind of getting the the sense uh with the other cards that end up coming up is that like you are like running towards love um 
it's it's not like you're running away from something you're running towards something um and you're going to be this glorious king of wands uh sitting on your throne you're happy you're passionate you're feeling good about about your decisions and what's to come uh so i know this like looks a little bit scary in the middle here but i feel like like this is what you wanted you are the king of your own the ruler of your own world and you're just going for it and um, that doesn't mean that it's you're not it's not going to be hard <laughs> at times if it hasn't been already if you haven't like gone through this yet uh, there is some little thing that is going to be like that's going to like push you to do it um, I think I want to get back to Metatron in a second um, so let's jump into a few of these oracle cards we have speak your mind Strength and Resilience and Transformation and Change. Let me move Metatron down here because we're still focusing on the tower energy here. We've got, I mean, th this was the most straightforward reading of, of out of all of the groups today. Um, it's not the only one with the tower. I think group number one had the tower if you want to go and look at that too. Um, but this one, this one gave me chills head to toe. This feels so powerful. I mean, they all felt really powerful because we've got this fire behind us. But this one just feels so, I, I, I don't know, chills head to toe. Like the, the whole time I was pulling cards for this reading, I just like, I still, I still can't kind of, kind of shake the energy um, here. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of like losing track of what I wanted to talk about. I think that these are all pretty, so whatever this bridge is that you're, that you're burning, you're, you're going to feel empowered to speak your mind and to let things go. See how you're, you're like using your words to blow those dandelions and they're going to carry off in the wind. Like I'm still like getting like all these surges of energy, like just as I'm saying it, you're just like so freaking done and look how happy you are to be walking away and and another another love message here these little cats kissing on the transformation and change we've got butterflies down there um this feels so empowering like just feel that wind blowing and like shifting you to change um uh, strength and resilience is is a big message for you here um what do we got? Okay, let's let's check out some more of our other oracle cards. Um, we have childhood innocence and also love and compassion. So this is why I was saying that like the, the four of wands card oftentimes does symbolize a, a wedding, some sort of celebration of like these milestones that we have in our life. Those these things that like uh it light us up and bring bring joy and we just what we just want to celebrate things that give you cause to celebrate so i feel like you are learning running towards love even if that is just loving yourself and uh feeling compassionate towards yourself uh, i think that this is um a part of the message that i was getting uh the ties that the bridges you might be burning the ties that you might be breaking uh, might be tied to family and childhood and this is giving you the opportunity to um, take care of your inner child allow yourself to finally live the life that you have been suppressing for so long because of different people in your life different um, situations in your life now you are finally able to be the king of wands that you have always wanted to be and you have set this inner child free uh, by taking this step even though it may might look drastic and feel traumatic this is the thing that is going to give you the most love and to heal your inner child and so that you can sit on your throne proudly confidently and just be I've, I'm getting just I'm getting all of these surges of energy that it's just like it's like, um, it almost feels like having like a scrub brush, brush just like clean out all of that gunk 
in inside of your energetic system and now it's just finally you can just be you everything inside of you is just 100 percent you um I don't even know where we want to go. Okay, so fairy pool baptism is our sacred hag message. And I would love to read from a little bit of this message. I am giving away a free copy of this deck. Um, so look for the information on how to enter to win in the description below. Um, this message, I actually got this card recently for... Um, myself and it has been a very a very cleansing it's funny that I was just saying that I feel like a scrub brush has been like like cleanse my inner ener energetic field because uh, this is kind of like what this what this message is here it um and it's a it's a message of renewal it's fairy pool baptism come to the water with me my child I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by what an ancient re remedy that holy and cool element can be. Where shall we go? We might wade just a bit in a muddy mountain stream after a good rain, or perhaps we shall find the sweetest renewal in a waterfall or greatest grief medicine in the old grandmother called the sea. Water spells bring us closer to our sacred sensuality, to our erotic innocence, got lots of innocent messages here um, innocent message and um, what was the other one um, oh it's it's another message that's coming up later sorry um, water spells bring us closer to our sacred sensuality to our erotic innocence when we forget our more in instinctual souls when we get lost in the muck of reason or blinded by the light of too sterile social proprieties, we must go to the water and ask for a blessing. She will abide that hallowed liquid. We are her kin after all. Um, and this is a really wonderful water ritual. I know a lot of water spells typically have bath rituals and not everybody has a bathtub and not everybody likes baths. So it's wonderful that the, the ritual in here, um, the morning ritual is a shower ritual. And it just simply says, um, what, when you, when you take a shower to treat it as a, as a, a, an energetic cleanse as well. And it asks you to, um, speak these words, um, of intention aloud while you're doing it. And it says on this, a most wild dawn. These waters shall cleanse me of a single belief I no longer need. May the rejuvenating power of this ritual rain befriend my blood. May the very waters of my body vibrate with all of the holiness of a mountain spring blessed by my personal ancestors. And so it is. So basically it's asking you to really make your cleansing ritual or your cleaning body cleaning ritual into an energetic cleaning ritual. And when you're standing under the shower head and imagine that it is just really like cleaning your energetic system and in this sense uh it's asking you to release part of you that you just do not want anymore so in in making that a practice whenever you take a shower is like really helping you to let that tower crumble so that something new and wonderful can can like sprout in its place um Okay, I felt like this was a lot. Like I I know that I'm like like the energy that I'm feeling is so great and powerful and uh it's going to bring you good things, but I also recognize that the tower moments in our life are not easy and and we're not always going to be feeling empowered and like we're going in the right direction. We might question ourselves and all of that thing. So I, I pick, picked an additional um, deck to work with uh, just this group. None of the other decks or none of the other piles had this deck in it. The angel guide message. I just felt like you, maybe you needed like a little bit more encouragement and help because I know that these times are not tough, especially if you're right here at the Ten of Swords. You're feeling like everything is just out to get you. Um, 
So this was your message, and I would love to read um, from the book for you. It says, listen deeply. We've got a lot of like healing inner child work here. Like this feels like, I know this, this is an angel uh, standing behind somebody, but this feels like kind of like mother and child kind of energy, and we've got this childhood innocence. So I felt like it was very um, fitting for this reading. Uh, angels are sending your guidance and inspiration through your powerful and resonant inner voice. Be ready to listen to that voice now. Listen to yourself. If you aren't able to hear yourself, you'll be blocking your connection to the information, insight, and guidance that can support you going forward. If you've been ignoring or, or avoiding dealing with something you feel that you've had to do for a very long time, your angels are encouraging you to stop listen to yourself and do it now. And a lot of times we have tower moments in our life because we've been ignoring those messages that we're supposed to walk away from something. We're supposed to start something new. We're supposed to go this way and, and not stay stuck in this one position. And when we don't listen and we don't do what the universe wants us to do, what we're meant to do, we're not, if we're not moving forward, the universe is going to throw something in our lives that's going to be catastrophic that makes something fall and there's like no way for you to go back and continue doing the same things over and over again. So the, the, you might be somebody that has been resisting for a while, but now you are ready to do it and now you're ready to take this transformation. Um, so the extended message of this card is the whispers of our inner voice are subtle and it takes patience and willingness to hear them. Especially if you've been ignoring them for a long time, but you have to get back into the practice of listening again. Um, often this voice can seem intensely honest and direct, but that's because it wants us to home in on our truth in order to grow. Often we don't like the truth the inner voice is giving us and refuse to listen, but all we are doing is blocking the guidance that is coming forward to us. The truth of the matter is that our inner voice is always working in our favor. And divine guidance is always loving and supportive. It will be direct and insightful, but won't make us feel low. So that's a really important message about like if, if you are hearing messages within your head that are putting you down and beating you up, that is not spirit. That is not spirit. A espe angels especially are going to love you unconditionally no matter what stupid mistake and no matter how, how often you like plug your ears and pretend that you're not listening, they're still going to love you. And um, especially you have, you chose Metatron here. Metatron is one of the very few angels that has, was a human at one point in time. So Metatron has even more compassion than all angelic energy does because he understands what it felt, feels like to be human and how difficult and shitty it is to be on planet Earth. Um, you can also invite them to clear old messages so that you can have more space energetically for guidance that is relevant to the present moment. So asking for assistance for allowing the, the tower to crumple will make it not so difficult as well. Um, we didn't even read the Metatron message yet, I'm sorry. Um, so Metatron's message is you are crowned with the light of source because you are the divine incarnate walk upon the earth as an angel and life shall conspire to lift you up wisdom is available to those who truly follow the integrity of their heart I feel like you are someone who has finally chosen love over um, maybe what your family said that you were supposed to do or what society says that you're supposed to do. I feel like you have finally chosen love and loving yourself and your inner child over whatever. Um, so last minute messages are strength. When your roots are deep, you need not fear the storm. Let's put that over the tower. <laughs> and teach inspire others and let nature be your greatest teacher um, i feel like people who end up teaching are the ones that have been through these really difficult times and are able to help other people especially there, there's this big childhood trauma kind of message coming through here and you're going to be able to help help children or help people in a similar situation to you not have to go through that and not have to endure that or to have help 
immediately available. Um, Cause that's why we learn these lessons. We learn these lessons so that we can teach them and so that we can help. And surprises is your last message. Under the most ordinary stone is an undisturbed garden. I think that like you are going to surprise yourself with this spark of just like taking the leap and moving forward. I think you're going to surprise yourself that you can get through this difficult time um, because I think immediately you're going to see like you're going to feel like relief. You're going to be standing in your power. You're going to feel confident and you're going to have reasons to celebrate. Um, ask for your angels. Um, listen, they are talking to you. Metatron also helps us helps us with um, spirituality, um, connecting with our angels, connecting with our guides. Let's see if there's any other one. Um, he helps us to connect with ancient wisdom so that we can tap into our genius. If you ask him, he will activate your DNA, crown, and upper chakras. When you are ready, he will illuminate your soul's mission so that you may step on the ascension path and become the best version of yourself. I believe in you, your guides believe in you, and use this fire that we've got with this Aries new moon to really push through this, push through this and get to the other side because you are the king of your own world and you deserve love and compassion and everything good that's coming your way. Um, if you'd like, to, uh, stay tuned after, immediately after this, this message for a collective message and more information about the Aries uh, new moon. And uh, thank you so much for your support. I hope you have a wonderful new moon. Good luck to you and I'll see you next time. Hello friends, I hope you enjoyed your reading. Please let me know by liking and subscribing uh, to my channel and uh, commenting on this video so that I know that these messages resonated with you or not. Um, however, you might really want to uh, comment today because that is how you will enter to win a copy of this Sacred Hags Oracle deck. Um, it's such a wonderful deck. I've talked about it before. I, I will link um, my review. It's kind of, ow, sorry, Odin's trying to get me. It's it's kind of an, an old review from when it, when it first came out. I definitely have like a way more higher opinion. I mean, I loved it. I loved it when I first got it, but I, um, I just have nothing but good things to say about this deck. I was so thrilled that I won an extra copy from the author Daniel Dulski. Um, so I'm so excited to give that away. So how you enter to win is to comment below uh, with why you want to connect to the sacred hag energy. Um, and sorry, Odin is trying to eat me apparently. Um, for those of you that don't know, Odin is my cat and she is fairly young. She's almost two now, but she is still very wild and rambunctious. So she is the one, if I'm ever making weird faces in videos, it's probably because she has used her claws uh, to get my attention. Um, so apologies for the distraction. Um, but yeah, comment below um, about how you would like to work with the sacred hag energy, or um, just let me know that you're interested in the giveaway. Uh, um, uh, you, so you can comment below and on this video, that would be one entry to win. You can uh, purchase uh, anything from the shop uh, using, uh, there's a special code that I will um, put in the description there. Um, the candles are on sale anyways for this fire new moon sale, so it would behoove you to uh, get a second entry uh, into the contest as well, just by purchasing some candles. Um, and that, and that goes for anything that can go in the, the website shop or the coffee shop memberships, anything. Um, as long as you mention that you want to be entered into the giveaway, um, that will give you additional entries as well as commenting and tagging a friend on the Instagram post. Um, for this for this video so make sure that you're following me on Instagram to see uh, the image will probably look very much like like this one here uh, that's usually what I post <laughs> uh, 
um, for uh, announcing that the video, the these pick a card readings have been uploaded. So commenting on that and tagging a friend uh, is really going to be um, helpful to get the word spread, but it's also going to get you an additional entry uh, to win a copy of this glorious deck. Uh, you each got one in your reading uh, today already. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. It's so wonderful. Anyways, so the collective readings, I was really feeling um, like normally um, Aries energy feels very active to me. Like I'm ready to like run, 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 run and go, 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 go. This energy of this new moon, for whatever reason, feels very like, it still feels like sparky, like, like igniting. Um, but it's more of like a spiritual ignition, if that, if that makes sense. So I felt really called to this deck um, that are the, or the Oracle cards, um, the Archangel Fire Oracle, maybe that's why, because there's actually fire in here, but um, I was just really feeling the like spiritual spark of this fire Aries new moon, whereas normally I feel it in a very like physically active sort of way. So it's like a spiritually active, spark is, is how the energy is feeling for me today. Um, we are incorporating in the Just a Phase Moon Planner the fire element to our altar and that is pretty easy to do if you have candles. So that is why we're having a candle sale. Um, candle magic is one of my favorite things that really connects me. Um, not just the fire energy, to be honest, it, it actually for me kind of connects me to all of the elements because just taking a candle taking the time to sit and light and take a deep breath um, really connects me to all of the elements because I'm sitting, I'm feeling how I'm feeling in my body. I'm taking a moment to be grounded and centered. Um, so that's connecting me to the earth element. Something about lighting a candle just really makes me take a deep breath, even if I'm not it, it, like it, it makes me aware of my breath aware of my body aware of like how i'm holding myself um so when i light a candle that i it's just like it makes you take this pause this like sacred pause stare at the flame take a deep breath and just like it's so soothing it's so calming um to light a candle to me and then of course it's connecting you so it's connecting to your your breath and the air element so we've got earth and air and um I'm usually sipping some like water, tea, coffee, or something when I'm sitting in front of my altar lighting a candle. I usually have a beverage with me. I always have a bowl of water on my altar as well, but so in a way, lighting a candle connects me to all of the elements. It's like the thing that starts the chain of connecting and balancing all of those elements. Um, so if you can't tell, fire moons are one of my favorite moons. Um, and I just, I feel like this message, all of the messages on the Bebops today are for everybody. Uh, remember that you have courage, you are enough, and you're able to integrate all of the aspects of yourself. Um, and that's exactly what makes you enough. Um, we've got a little bit of prosperity that we needed for group number one, some courage for group number two. And I thought some like, uh, I chose the Lapidolite. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, actually, now that I say that. <laughs> um, but Lapidolite is for calming anxiety when we're going through difficult times. Um, so that was one of the commonalities between group one and group three was that uh, both of them were experiencing tower moments. Um, if you haven't already, maybe you will throughout this moon cycle. Um, but the tower moments just teach us something that teach us that we need to start something new. Um, very empowering energy with all of the readings today. Um, let's see if we can find that. Usually we have some commonalities amongst, amongst the tarot, but I think today it was just all of the messages from the Everyday Witch Oracle were about speaking your truth, uh, enjoying your life, uh, going through the transformation and, and with grace, um, standing in your power, standing in your strength, planting new seeds, 
um, because that's what we like to do at the new moon. Um, using healing waters, um, again, we have this courage message here uh, to give and receive love. And again, another change and transformation, change in progress. So while last new moon, and I think even the, the moon before that, we were we we were experiencing a lot of 10 so we were at the completion of a cycle and for this one for this moon it feels like it feels very empowering and it feels like now that we have completed these cycles we're ready to start the new one so we're kind of like burning away the old uh setting the stage for the new is is what's happening with this aries new moon so we're just we're just shedding it shedding it like shedding it like a snake moving forward uh with love and compassion we did get some additional angel messages here and i just want to showcase the beautiful um the beautiful sacred hag oracle here first of all the backs of the cards are really cool there's also sigil magic worked into the artwork here um just to give you a closer look uh since you only got to see one card with your with your reading. Um, so there's different suits. That's why they're all different colors. It's such a very, it's just a very, very, very cool deck. A very deep work. It, it gives you this like, uh, this grandmotherly energy so that you're able to feel safe and comforted and protected and loved while we are going through and exploring these shadow aspects of ourself. Um, but this Aries moon feels very renewing and revitalizing. We've completed cycles. We're kind of in this transition of like shedding and releasing now that we've completed those cycles. And, and I think uh, probably the next, the next new moon, we're going to be starting to really build and grow. Um, so we're, we're using the Aries fire to transform uh, to transform and to burn away. Uh, and that's what fire is good at. Fire is good at uh, releasing and letting go. Um, we've got a big section for our our intentions for this month. Um, so I encourage you to really get into those action plans because Aries is all about action. Aries is going to give us that energy that we need to complete the things that we set, set our intentions around. Um, if you're not able to use fire, you can, for your altar, you can still use the color red or use um, glitter, something that sparks and excites you. Um, so it doesn't have to be candles. That's just one of the things that I really connect with. Um, And you can, anything that like symbolizes courage and strength, it could be a lion, even though uh, the Aries is the ram, like maybe a lion is something that represents fire to you, or maybe one of the other zodiac signs represents fire to you more than Aries does. You can still use that energy. We're all about like the elements with the Just a Phase Moon Planner in this community, because that is really what I think helps people connect to all of the different energies. Um, so you, placing a red cloth on your altar, that's why I used um, this particular cloth because it has the animal print that feels like fiery and, and wild to me. Um, so I use this altar cloth on my altar um, for, for fire and specifically Aries. Um, this, it's interesting that I typically use red for Aries but I've been feeling very hot pink energy with this with this moon, um, so I don't know what that is, but that's what I'm that's what I'm going for. Um, so you might want to use a pink cloth if if that calls to you. Um, but of course, you can always use red. And then there's also the the stones that connect us to the energy, uh, which you will find uh, in the front of your planner here. Oops. Um, remember to always be able to refer back to these sections because it, it does give you a lot of information about each sign. Um, there's color correspondences at the bottom. 
uh, as well as stones and crystals. So carnelian, fire agate, citrine, um, things that are going to kind of calm down fire a little bit are hematite, red jasper, and bloodstone. It's going to connect you to the earth so that you're not like blazing all over the place. Um, so remember that this information is here for you. The keywords are, are highlighted in bold here. Um, so that's, and it's got the dates on there. If you're like trying to learn the seasons and the energy around that, the dates are up there for you so that you're able to say like, oh, airy season, well, airy season is right now. Um, airy season is March between, between March and April. So that helps you think like, well, what, what kind of energy does March and April encompass for me and in my local environment? Um, so I, I wish you the best with all of your intentions. May all of your dreams come true. I hope to see you in Wonderland another time, and I hope uh, you enter the giveaway because one lucky winner is going to get a very wonderful, empowering Sacred Hag Oracle deck by Daniel Dulski. Um, please like and subscribe. I don't know what to say anymore. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.